Welcome to Ultrasound Guided Vascular Access. Over the last decade, evidence supports the use of ultrasound in the placement of vascular devices. It is well known that IV complications can extend stay and that difficult access resulting in multiple attempts can delay care. Whenever there is a failure of the placement of a peripheral device, inevitably there would be a requirement of a more invasive device with its associated risks. Therefore, it's important that physicians are skilled in the placement of peripheral vascular devices using conventional techniques, but also being aware and knowledgeable in the use of ultrasound to guide the placement of such devices, especially when initial placement has failed. It is known that ultrasound guided line insertion results in fewer complications and that the use of ultrasound can decrease complication rates. Attempts, successful or failed, can result in pain and organ injury and this has been recognized to be less common with ultrasound guided placement. Ultimately, this improves patient satisfaction and reduces time to successful insertion of a vascular device. In this slide, one can see the orientation of underlying structures in relation to the interrogating ultrasound beam generated by a linear probe. Typically, these images are obtained using linear probes with frequencies greater than 13 MHz. In image A, one can appreciate a vessel appearing as a circular structure with an area of darkness within, surrounded by an outlining bright vessel wall. On image B, which is the longitudinal scan, the same structure appears linear, the vascular walls being highlighted and an area of darkness within representing the lumen of the vessel. On this slide, one can appreciate the longitudinal view of the vessel with an advancing needle entering the vessel at the outer margin of the end of the probe. The advantage of this view is that depth perception is better appreciated. However, lateral displacement of the vessel in relation to the advancing needle is less easily appreciated. The phenomena described in the previous slide can now be appreciated with the appearance of a needle entering the vessel. And on section 3, the needle has actually gone beyond the vessel wall and into underlying tissue. On a cross-sectional view, as seen on this slide, one can appreciate the advantage of recognizing lateral displacement of the advancing needle in relation to the underlying vessel. Ideally, the needle will be manipulated to enter the underlying vessel at its greatest diameter and optimally placed within the center of the vessel. However, as previously mentioned, depth perception can be challenging using this view and it would require angulation of the probe to capture the tip of the advancing needle as it enters the vessel. The subsequent two slides are done by Sonosite, the ultrasound company, and these include video with embedded audio to explain both techniques and their limitations. These videos are freely available online courtesy of Sonosite. Linear array transducer with a vascular exam type is used to perform an ultrasound guided insertion of a radial artery catheter via a transverse approach. The patient is in a supine position with the arm abducted 45 degrees and externally rotated. The wrist is extended by placing a small roll beneath the wrist crease. The transducer is placed transversely just proximal to the wrist crease with the orientation marker directed to the patient's right. The radial artery is superficial and is seen as a dark, anechoic, round, pulsatile structure on the lateral aspect of the wrist, seen in the midst of static, echo-dense material. There are often small venous vessels which accompany the radial artery, which can be compressed with gentle transducer pressure. The radius can be seen as an anechoic, dark structure approximately one centimeter below the radial artery. Adjust the transducer so it is centered over the artery. Follow the needle entry by slowly sliding the transducer in the direction of needle advancement. The needle will appear as a small bright dot. When the needle tip appears, the transducer should be advanced a short distance distally to follow the tip of the needle trajectory and stay in advance of the needle entry. 
The needle is slowly advanced under direct ultrasound visualization until the tip is seen to puncture the radial artery. The transducer should be moved slightly proximally and distally to confirm the needle tip lies in the mid portion of the artery. Here we see the long axis approach and the needle coming in from left to right, and we note here how the long axis orientation is excellent for seeing vertical needle depth. Note the needle coming through the anterior wall of the vessel, and now the needle tip squarely within the vessel lumen. Here we can see how the long axis orientation allows us to plan the optimal depth for the needle tip with regard to the venous lumen to squarely secure a cannulation attempt. Now this is in difference to the short axis orientation which was better for lateral needle orientation with regard to the vessel lumen.